get a little of this. Alaskan snow crab season has been canceled as officials investigate the disappearance of an estimated 1 billion crabs. They just disappear, guys. They uh, There's a bunch of excuses like, uh, I don't know, maybe they, they got lost. The crabs got lost in the Bering Sea. Um, aliens got them. They disappeared. They took them all out. Uh, lots of UFOs. What else could it be? I've heard uh, climate change, perhaps, has made the crabs uh, disappear into the Arctic because they like the colder water. Uh, tons of the, these ridiculous excuses been coming out, you know, like winter vagina, a bunch of excuses. Did you know about the safe and effective uh, Fukushima nuclear meltdown that happened on 311? So you get an idea here. Um, over here is this um, place called Fukushima, Japan. And very conveniently, there is a fast moving stream of water that with only within a few days could be right out here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So, uh, yeah, like, it's still leaking. I, I'm, I'm not sure if you're still aware that uh, the Fukushima uh, nuclear reactors have not been contained. It's like people forgot. Like, you talk to the normal person out there, and they, uh, they eat seafood, no problem. They, they don't care where it comes from. They're like, oh, I'm eating this uh, Alaskan salmon. Uh, I'm doing, I'm eating really healthy. And I just look at them with these eyes like, oh, really, you are, huh? Because these people have no freaking clue. The average Joe out there, the average person who consumes mainstream media is being sent off a cliff. They are diving. They are just throwing a somersault right into a pack of alligators. It's kind of frightening to watch. Like, you know, it gets old after a while because we've tried to warn these people for over a decade not to eat the Fukushima fish. They're breaking down as we speak. A lot of these people are not with us anymore. They've contracted all types of rare cancers debilitating diseases and there's some that are hanging on but they they're they look like shit basically they these people are falling apart right in front of us uh so they're scourging scavenging scrounging for the last bits of life there in the pacific ocean these pacific crabs that have uh they went awol they're missing they uh they decided you know they no longer want to be eaten so just so we get an idea here, just so we get an idea here, you see how this, uh, I think this Kyriosho current or something like that, uh, don't hold me to it, but it's something like that, is this current right here. And as you can see, up here is the Bering Strait, and here is where they say a billion crabs have gone missing, so they're saying they don't want anybody trying to harvest any type of crab because there's just too many missing. And over here in uh, California, they said there's like a really bad red tide going on. So you see this current from Japan only takes about 7 to 10 days for this water from Fukushima to reach California. Fukushima, California. So there's been a lot of uh, dead animals washing up all around the world. As you can follow, there's been 400 whales that had washed up in Australia, New Zealand. There's a bunch of dead animals wherever you go. There's uh, 400 vultures that died in Georgia. A vulture of all animals must be a pretty tough animal. Very weird, very suspect. A lot of people have been driving around the roads. They're not encountering the amount of bugs on their windshield. If you do have bugs in your windshield, that's at least a good sign that you have some life out there. But a lot of parts of the world, especially in this Pacific area, is a huge die-off, massive die-off. We're in a mass extinction event. Uh, there's been more loss of life within the past 10, 20 years than there's been in, uh, since the time that the dinosaurs were wiped out. So we are in this uh, last stages. You know, if you've read any prophecy, that you can see that people say the the seal's been broken in the ocean, and a, the third of the ocean is dead. Well, we're already we already there. If people like to make these prophecies happen. So like the evil people control, be like, oh yeah, we got them this time. We're gonna follow this uh, prophecy here. We're gonna just make it happen. Be that what it will. I just wanted you to take a look at this. Mystery disease, you know, the scientists are baffled, they're confused, they're stumped, they're... Do not understand what is happening here, because the crabs have went on vacation, they cannot be found, they're just missing, guys, uh, but I'm sure they'll be back, maybe in like 250 million years. Once the uh, we figure out a way to clean up all this radiation, uh, we might be able to 
bring him back with some DNA sequencing or something. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe we'll, we'll have to make some bio crabs, some bioengineered crabs. I'm sure the I'm sure some people really hard are at work or are already uh, developing some ways that they can you know make some type of food that uh, can absorb the radiation and won't affect them as much. For the unfortunate souls out there that eat it, well, more power to you. I continue to run into these people that eat seafood, and it really bothers me. I look at it, I smell it, and it reeks of death. Here we go. The wonderful CBS Evening News, you know, the ones that have the the all-seeing eye is going to give you this update because they only have, like, one basic uh, eye view of what they want you to see, what what they want you to believe. So let's uh, let's see what they have to say here. Nora O'Donnell, this bump bobblehead. The go to America's seafood industry, Alaska's Department of Fish and Game has canceled the winter snow crab season in the Bering Sea due to falling numbers. While restaurant menus will suffer, the greatest impact will be to the economy to the tune of $200 million. For tonight's Eye on America, CBS's Jonathan Vigliotti traveled to Alaska to investigate. Autumn is a time for stocking up on Alaska's Kodiak Archipelago. Its famous namesake bears feast on a buffet of salmon ahead of winter. And in the nearby fishing port, one of the largest in the country, Gabriel Prout and his family had mapped out crab season. We'll leave our slip here in Dog Bay, Kodiak, Alaska, head out around Spruce Island. But the odds of Prout's ship ever leaving his slip are now slim to none, which could also be said about the snow crab population that makes up most of his business. An estimated one billion crabs mysteriously disappeared in just two years. That's a 90% plunge. Where have the snow crab gone? Did they run up north to get to that colder water? Did they completely cross across the border? Did they walk off the continental shelf on the edge there of the Bering Sea? We don't know. The first reaction was, is is this real? You know, we looked at, it was almost a flat line. As a researcher with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Let's see what we've got for crab. It's Ben Daly's job to monitor the health of the state's fisheries, which produce 60% of the nation's seafood. His team is now investigating where the crabs have gone. Crabs have gone. But we're trying to look for causes. Uh, Disease is one possibility. Daly also points to climate change. Alaska is the fastest warming state in the country and is losing billions of tons of ice each year, critical for crabs who need cold water to survive. Environmental conditions are changing rapidly. We've seen some warm conditions in the Bering Sea the last handful of years, and we're seeing a response in a cold adapted species. So it's pretty obvious that that this this is connected. We need a rapid relief financial program to get us through disasters like this, much like farmers get during crop failures or communities get soon after a hurricane or flood. What does a person do whose life is dependent on the ocean when the ocean stops giving? Hope and pray. Hope and pray the snow crab. I got some advice for you, buddy. Sell your boat because there's not going to be much coming out of that ocean for a very long time. The governments of this world have let you down, all included. Any country that owns a nuclear reactor, has it sitting on an ocean, or has a reactor sitting on a river that goes out to the ocean is a sellout. Because all that is going into the ocean. It was only a matter of time, things are going to get a lot worse out there because these events will keep on happening. They are not going to stop because you can see a lot of these reactors are decrepit they're over 40 years old they have a bunch of radioactive waste sitting in fuel pools just waiting for the next uh who knows hurricane tornado tsunami terrorism war many different factors are going to happen and it's going to continue polluting the world's oceans our streams our rivers so Forget the bailout, man. Forget coming back. Forget trying to go out of the Pacific Ocean and trying to uh, locate these creatures because their death warrant has been signed. This is not a mystery disease. You can't, like, inject these crabs and they're all going to be saved. Science, the speed of science, isn't going to be able to save the Pacific Ocean. As you can see, they tried to move at this uh, warp speed and try to fix certain things, and uh, they only got worse. 
First, if you want to stop the bleeding, you really have to shut off all these nuclear reactors. You have to punish Japan for dumping their radioactive waste into the ocean on purpose, may I add. I looked at Fukushima Daiichi recently, and uh, it's been a while since I really, you know, took a look over here. I noticed they have this 311 memorial there now. So that's quite interesting that they, it's called the 311 Martyr Memorial. I don't know if they, these are like names of the people, some of the people that died there. It's got some ridiculous reviews, like some people are pissed off that they can't go and see it. And it's, I guess TEPCO has to hand out like a pass for people to want to go see it. And you got to be an idiot to want to go out there and look at this shrine because it's on uh, Fukushima Daiichi property. So this is really a contaminated area. It's not a place that uh, you want to be. Uh, but there's a lot of idiots out there for sure. They want to do some uh, nuclear tourism. Like, I don't know if you've been following uh, BioNerd. I used to watch this lady. Uh, she would go out to the Chernobyl zone. She would go fishing out of Pripyat River uh, over there in Chernobyl. She would go out there in the Pripyat River and she'd be eating fish out of the Pripyat. And she took a lot of tours into Chernobyl and try to look up that lady and see what she's been up to lately. You can't find her. The last video BioNerd did was four years ago. Where's BioNerd? Where is that lady? Huh? Miss Chernobyl, where'd she go? I don't know. Maybe she should show up and just let us know how she's doing. Because, I don't know, maybe she got an aggressive form of cancer or something. She already looked like a cancer patient when I saw her. Because her hair was, like, really short or whatever. I guess it's bushy, butchy, whatever you want to call it. You know, I have no problem. You want to have a short haircut, that's it's all on you. I don't really care, you know, how you want to present yourself. But uh, it is a little fishy that Miss Chernobyl, bio nerd, hasn't been around for four years. Yeah, I'd probably think these nuclear tourism is probably not a good idea for your long-term survival here. I was following here the mass deaths. We have 200 whales dead in Australia. Let's see, tons of dead fish are washing up in the UK. Hundreds of dead seabirds in England. Thousands of dead fish wash up in Long Beach Island, New Jersey. Uh, thousands of dead fish in Jamaica. You have 67,000 dead cattle in India. That's, that's a heck of a lot of cattle. Hundreds of dead seabirds in Sicily. Thousands of dead fish are, are washing up in Lake Wichita, Texas. Unprecedented red tide in San Francisco. Unprecedented, huh? Probably not a good idea to be eating fish out of there, guys. Just trying to explain this map real quick. But basically what you're having here are these major streams of water. This cold water will actually come up here through Antarctica, work its way up into the Kyoshio current. This current is moving very fast. So the Kyoshio current is, is warm water, especially it's extra warm because it's coming off of Fukushima. And that water is getting mixed up here. And there's some currents that will send it into the Bering Strait. This is the Bering Strait right here. This is where the missing crabs are. And uh, if you get an idea here how fast this water is moving in three days, you're getting Fukushima water right here. So some of these currents will come up in here. You have the the cold current coming all the way up from Antarctica, moving its way up to here. It'll be mixing in here and mixing in here. And maybe these crabs, some of them, probably were sensing danger. And they probably, some of them did move up into the Arctic region in this north by the North Pole. But yeah, of course... Uh, climate is changing because of Fukushima. Climate is changing. The water is getting hotter. When you have hundreds of nuclear reactors that are boiling millions of millions of gallons of water per minute, well, eventually, yeah, you are going to be heating up the water just by doing that alone. And then when you add the radioactive particles that are emitting energy, it's also going to be heating up the water. So the climate is changing. The climate is changing from all the nuclear reactors that our countries have been pushing upon us. Crabs return, and his way of life continues. For I in America, I'm Jonathan Vigliotti on Kodiak Island. In a major blow to America's seafood industry, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game has, for the first time in its state history, 
canceled the winter snow crab season in the Bering due to their failing numbers. So they're so worried about restaurant menus will suffer. Uh, what about the people suffering when they eat this Fukushima contaminated food? But no, let's not worry about that because they don't die right away. They, they die 5, 10, 15 years later of a cancer, so it doesn't matter then. So the scientists are suddenly worrying about the sudden population plunge. Scientists, why weren't you worrying about this on 3-11-2011? You should have been warning the world that we're going to be seeing population plunges in our Pacific Ocean. What excuse are you going to give us now? They're vanished, they're on vacation, they're, they're confused, they're stumped. Uh, what's going on here? A billion crabs have mysteriously... It's a mystery, guys. It's not much of a mystery to, to us who have been following Fukushima, but it's a mystery to those people who have been asleep. They say here for the last two years, they don't know what happened. A 90% drop in the crab's population. I really like spiders to me, big ass spiders. That's not something I would eat anyway. Okay, so did they run up north to get the colder water? I don't know. I guess if I was a smart crab, I would try to get away from that Fukushima water. So they rely heavily on the snow crab population. Did they completely cross the border? Did they walk off the continental shelf on the edge there over the Bering Sea? If you think about a sea crab and they're walking on the bottom of the ocean, a lot of this radioactivity is falling down through the water because it's a heavy particle and it drops and that's where you're going to see, you know, the crabs eating the invertebrates or eating little things in the sand and stuff. So they're going to be bioaccumulating this radiation. Crabs specifically, they will be doing that a lot. So that's, they're going to be, you know, on the way out for sure. Where are the crabs have gone? So it's about 60% of the nation's seafood. So a lot of food does come out of this area. We knew that this is going to eventually happen. You're having food shortages happening all around the world. And pretty much at the same time, you're going to have billions of people starving. Because we know there, there's a couple billion people that do depend on the Pacific Ocean for their food. Now we're having all these food shortages happening. I'm sure even... You go to the store and there's a lot of stuff that you're buying that you used to buy. And it's kind of hard to find now. You go there and you'll be lucky to find it. And you know, there might be months, six months have gone by. I haven't seen this pasta that I've been looking for for a while. Some organic pasta. You know, it's, it's getting harder and harder to find these things. There's going to be a mass starvation event as well. Because when you cut off that amount of food in this short period of time. You're going to have a lot of hungry people and things are going to get rough out there. And if you don't have a garden, if you're in a big city, it might be time to get out. Try to locate to an area that has some food reserves where you can have your own garden. Because uh, I think t the tough times are really close ahead to us. So yeah, they're pointing out as climate change and disease is one possibility. Oh, disease. You mean like disease caused from radiation? Because I'm pretty sure the radiation will weaken your immune system and then any little thing can come along and kill these things. It's the fastest warming state in the country. Well, yeah, because it's it's loaded up with Fuku. Uh, lo losing billions of tons of ice each year. What happened that could possibly cause such a tragedy? I believe it was 311. Look up the meltdowns of Fukushima. Environmental conditions are changing rapidly, Daly said. We've seen some warm conditions in the Bering Sea for the last couple of years. It's probably been more than a couple of years, buddy. It's probably been the last uh, seven or eight years you're having a significant amount of Fuku radiation enter this area. We're seeing a response in a cold adapted species, so it's pretty obvious this is connected. It's a canary in the coal mine for other species that need cold water. It's not only cold species, guy. This is all species. All species are facing the challenge of Fukushima radiation. The bodies aren't designed to withstand it. They says there needs to be a relief program for fishermen. Similar to programs for farmers who experience crop failure. Well, see, there's a difference. If a farmer has a bad year with his crops, he can always fix things for the next year, come back. 
you guys ain't coming back, man. So we're going to fund you for the rest of your life because the Fukushima radiation? I feel bad for you. Don't get me wrong. I feel bad for fishermen. I love the fish, but uh, I'm not going to be doing it in the Pacific Ocean. It's a no-brainer right now. Why would you do that? You're going to be having a lot of lonely days out there. You're going to get exposed. Why would you want to give people food that's going to get them sick? 